I read in this letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He is very near. He was not three leagues off when I left him. How many gentlemen were lost in this action? But a few of any sort, and none of name. Don Pedro hath bestowed much honor on a young Florentine called Claudio. Much deserved on his part. He hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figures of a lamb, the feats of a lion. I pray you, is Signor Mountanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. My cousin means Signor Benedict. Oh, he's returned, and as pleasant as he ever was. He hath done a good service, and a good soldier too, lady. <laughs> and a good soldier to a lady. But what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. You must not, sir, mistake my niece. There's a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and she. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. The right noble Claudio. <gasps> oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. God help the noble Claudio. If he hath caught the Benedict, it will cost him a thousand pound ere he be cured. I will go hold good friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. Don Pedro is approached. Signora Leonora, are you come to meet your trouble? Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your grace. I think this is your daughter? If Signora Leonora be her mother, she would not have her head on her shoulders for all Messina, as like her as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My dear Lady Disdain, are you yet living? Is it possible this dame should die while well, she has such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? <laughs> courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. I thank God in my cold blood I'm of your humor for that. I'd rather hear a dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall scape a predestinate scratched face. Scratching could have make it worse and twerse such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot teacher. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue, and so good a continuer. But keep your way, in God's name, I have done. <laughs> you always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. Signor Claudio and Signor Benedict, my dear friend Leonor hath invited you all, and she hardly prays some occasion may detain us longer. I dare swear she prays from her heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Let me bid you welcome, my lord, being reconciled to the prince your brother. I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am... Um... Not of many words, but I thank you. Please let your grace lead on. Your hand, Leonora. We will go together. Benedict, didst thou note the daughter of Signora Leonora? I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? You question me as an honest man should do for my simple true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, in faith, methinks she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. I do not like her. <laughs> thou thinkest I am in sport? I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likes her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and a case to put it into. In mine eyes, she is the sweetest lady that I ever looked on. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if Hero would be my wife. Does it come to this? Shall I never see a bachelor of threescore again? What 
secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonora's? I would your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio, I can be secret as a dumb man. On my allegiance, he is in love with Hero, Leonora's daughter. Amen. If you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the despite of beauty. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But I will live a bachelor. Hmm. I shall see thee, ere I die, look pale with love. With anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord. Not with love. Well, if thou ever doubts fall from this faith, thou wilt prove a notable argument. If I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat and shoot at me. And so I leave you. My liege, your highness now may do me good. Hath Leonora any daughter, my lord? No child but hero. She's her only heir. Doubt thou affect her, Claudio? <sighs> my lord, when you first went onward on this ended action, I looked upon her with a soldier's eye that liked but had a rougher task at hand than to drive liking to the name of love. But now I am returned, and that war thoughts have left their places vacant. In their rooms come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair a young hero is, saying that I liked her ere I went to wars. Thou dost love fair hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, and thou shalt have her. I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise and tell fair hero, I am Claudio, and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then, after to her father will I break, and the conclusion is, she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. How now, sister? Sister, I can tell you strange news that you yet dreamt not of. Are they good? The prince and Count Claudia were thus much overheard. The prince discovered to Claudia that he loves your daughter and means to acknowledge it this night in a dance. Half the fellow any wit that heard this? Uh, a good sharp fellow. No, no. We will hold it as a dream till it appear itself true. But I will acquaint my daughter with fall that she may be the better prepared for an answer if this be true. Go you and tell her of it. What's a good year, my lord? Why are you thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breeds. Therefore, the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? If not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jests. I laugh when I am merry. Yay, but you must not make a full show of this. You have of late stood out against your brother and he hath taken you newly into his grace. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace, and it better fits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from any. It must not be denied, but I am a plain-dealing villain. Let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? Mary, it is on your brother's right hand. 
Who? The most exquisite Claudio? Even he. Which way looks he? Mary, on hero, the daughter and heir of Leonora. A very forward march chick. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him in any way, I bless myself in every way. You are sure? And will assist me. To the death, my lord. Shall we go prove what's to be done? I'll wait upon your lordship. Your lordship. Was not Count John here at supper? I saw him not. How tardy that gentleman looks. I never can see him, but I am heartburned an hour after. He is of a very melancholy disposition. Well, niece, I trust you'll be ruled by your father. Mm, yes, faith, it is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Father, as it please you, but yet, for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. Well, niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. <laughs> Not till God make men of some other metal than earth. Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. The revelers are entering, sister. Make good room. Lady, when you walk about with your friend. So, you walk softly and look sweetly and say nothing. I am yours for the walk, especially when I walk away. With me and your company. I may say so when I please. And when do you please to say so? When I like your favor. Speak low, you speak low. Well, I would you did like me. So would not I for your own sake, for I have many ill qualities. Which is one. <laughs> I say my prayers aloud. I love you the better. The hearers may cry, Amen. God match me with a good dancer. Amen. God keep him out of my sight when the dance is done. Answer, flirt. No more words. I know you well enough. You are Signora Antonia. At a word, I am not. I know you by the waggling of your head. To tell you true, I counterfeit her. You can never do her so ill well unless you were the very woman. Here's her dry hand up and down. You are she. At a word. I am not. Come, come. Do you think I do not know you by your excellent wit? Can virtue hide itself? Go to, mum. You are she. Will you not tell me who you are? Not now. <laughs> that I was disdainful, and that I had my good wit of a hundred merry tales. Well, this was Signor Benedict that said so. What's he? I'm sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? What? He's the prince's jester. A very dull fool. Only his gift is in devising impossible slanders. None of the libertines delight in him, and the commendation is not in his wit, but in his villainy. For he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and beat him. When I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Do, do. It would break a comparison or two on me. <laughs> you must follow the leaders. In every good thing. Sure, my brother is amorous on hero, and hath withdrawn her father to break with him about it. The ladies follow her, and but one visor remains. And that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Are you not Signor Benedict? You know me well, I am he. Signor, you are very near my brother in love. He is enamored on hero. I pray you dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. 
You may do the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. So did I too. And he swore he would marry her tonight. Let us to the banquet. Thus answer I in name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with ears of Claudio. Tis certain so, the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things, save in the office and affairs of love. Farewell, therefore, hero. Count Claudio? Yea. The prince hath got your hero. I wish him joy of her. Why? Did you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you, leave me. Oh, now you strike like the blind man. "'Twas the boy that stole your meat, and you'll beat the post. "'If it will not be, I'll leave you. "'Alas, poor hurt fowl, that my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me. "'The prince is fool. Ha, and maybe I go under that title because I am merry. "'Yea, but so I am apt to do myself wrong. "'I am not so reputed. "'It is the base, though bitter, disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Now, senor, where's the count? Did you see him? I found him here, as melancholy as a lodge in a warren. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace hath got the good will of this young lady. Now is he a schoolboy who, being overjoyed with finding a bird's nest, shows it his companion and he steals it. I will, but teach him to sing and restore them to the owner. If they're singing, answer your saying. By my faith, you say honestly. The Lady Beatrice, look, here she comes. Oh God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. I brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to seek. Why, how now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Sad, my lord. How then, sick? Neither, my lord. The count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil. Count, civil as an orange, or something of that jealous complexion. My faith, lady, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. I have broke with her mother, and her goodwill obtained. Name the day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count! Take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace have made the match, and all grace say amen to it. <clears throat> Speak, Count. Tis your cue. Uh, uh, silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. I give myself away for you, and dote upon the exchange. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss, and let not him speak neither. In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Yea, my lord, I thank it, poor fool. He keeps on the windy side of care. <laughs> my cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cousin. Good lord for alliance. Thus goes everyone in the world but I, and I am sunburnt. I may sit in a corner and cry hi-ho for husband. Lady Beatrice. Will you have me? No, my lord, unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. But I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me, and to be merry best becomes you. For out of question, you were born in a merry hour. No. Sure, my lord, my mother cried, and there was a star dance, and other that I was born. Cousins, God give you joy. By my troth, a pleasant-spirited lady. She is never sad, but when she sleeps, and not ever sad then. For I have heard my daughter say she have often dreamt of unhappiness, and waked herself with laughing. Hmm. She cannot endure to hear tell of a husband. Oh, by no means. She mocks all her words out of suit. She were an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, Lord, my Lord. <laughs> if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. 
Count Claudio, when mean you go to church? Uh, tomorrow, my lord. Time goes on crutches till love has all his rights. Not till Monday, my dear son. I warrant thee, Claudio. The time shall not go dully by us. I will, the interim, undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring Signor Benedict and the Lady of Beatrice into a mountain of affection. You three will administer such assistance as I shall give you direction. My lord, I am for you, though it cost me ten nights' watchings. And I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero? I will do any modest office to help my cousin to a good husband. And Benedict is not the unhopeless husband that I know. Go with me and I will tell you my drift. It is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonora. Yea, my lord, but I can cross it. I am sick in displeasure to him. And whatsoever comes athwart his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? I think I told your lordship years since how much I am in favor of Margaret, the waiting gentlewoman of Tahiro. I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look out her lady's chamber window. What life is in that? To be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in you to temper. Go you to the prince your brother. Tell him that he hath, he hath wronged his honor in marrying the renowned plot, whose estimation do you mightily hold up. To a contaminated stale, such a one as here. What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, undo hero, and kill Leonora. <laughs> Look you for any other issue? Only to despite them, I will endeavor anything. Draw Don Pedro and the Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know that Hero loves another. That you have discovered dust. Offer them instances. See me at her chamber window. Hear me call Margaret Hero. And hear Margaret call me Baraccio. And bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. There shall appear such seeming truth of Hero's disloyalty that jealousy shall be called assurance. And all the preparations <laughs> overthrow. Throw this to what adverse issue it can, I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the working of this, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. Boy! Senor? In my chamber window lies a book. Bring it hither to me in the orchard. I am here already, sir. I know that, but I would have thee hence and here again. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. May I be so converted and see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another virtuous, yet I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Ha! The prince and monsieur love. I will hide me. Come, shall we hear this music? Yea, my good lord. See where Benedict hath hid himself? Oh, very well, my lord. Come, sister, we'll hear that song again. Oh, good my lord, tax not so bad a voice to slander music any more than once. I pray thee, sing, and let me woo no more. 
because you speak of wooing, I will sing. And since many a wooer doth his suit, he thinks that he is not worthy of her. And yet he woos, and yet he swears he loves. Note this before my notes. There's not a note of mine that is worth the noting. Troth, a good song. And she had been a dog that should have howled thus, they would have hanged her. I pray thee, get us some excellent music, for tomorrow night we would have it at the Lady Hero's chamber window. The best I can, my lord. Do so. Come hither, Leonora. What was it you told me of today that your niece Beatrice was in love with Signor Benedict? Hey. I, I did never think that lady would have loved any man. Nor I neither, but most wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she hath in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. Is it possible? Sits the wind in that corner? By my troth, my lord, I cannot tell what to think of it, but that she loves him with an enraged affection and his past the infinity of thought. Maybe she doth, but counterfeit. Oh, God! Counterfeit? There was never counterfeit of passion came so near the life of passion as she discovers it. Hmm. Has she made her affection known to Benedict? No, and she swears she never will. That's her torment. Tis true indeed. So your daughter says, Shall I? says she, that so often countered him with scorn. Write to him that I love him. She'll be up 20 times a night, and there will she sit in her smock till she have writ a sheet of paper. My daughter tells us all. Now, you talk of a sheet of paper. I remember a pretty jest your daughter told of us. <laughs> oh, when she had writ it and was reading it over, she found Benedict and Beatrice between the that oh she tore the letter into a thousand half pence railed at herself that she should be so immodest to write to one that she knew would flout her <laughs> then down upon her knees she falls weeps sobs beats her heart tears her hair prays curses oh sweet benedict god give me patience he doth indeed my daughter says so and the ecstasy have so much overborn her that my daughter is sometimes a fear that she will do a desperate outrage to herself. It is very true. Excellent, sweet lady. And out of all suspicion, she is virtuous. And she is exceeding wise. In everything but in loving Benedict. I pray you, you tell him of it and hear what he will say. Never tell him, my lord. Let her wear it out with good counsel. 
Nay, that's impossible. She may wear her heart out first. Well, we will hear further about your daughter. I love Benedict well. I could wish he would modestly examine himself to see how much he's so unworthy, so good a lady. My lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. Send her to call him in to dinner. This can be no trick. I have the truth of this from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me? Why? It must be requited. They say that she will rather die than give any sign of affection. I did never think to marry. They say the lady is fair. Tis a truth, I can bear them witness. And virtuous, tis so. I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me. By my troth, it is no addition to her wit, nor no great argument of her folly, for I will be horribly in love with her. When I said I would die a bachelor, I did not think I should live till I were married. Here comes Beatrice. By this day, she's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. Against my will, I am sent to bid you to come to dinner. Fair Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure, then, in the message. Yeah, just so much as you may take upon a knife's point and choke a doll with all. You have no stomachs in your life? <laughs> Very well. Against my will, I am sent to bid you come in to dinner. There is a double meaning in that. I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me. That's as much to say, any pains that I take for you is as easy as thanks. If I do not take pity on her, if I do not love her, I am a villain. I will go get her picture. find my cousin Beatrice. Tell her I and Ursula walk in the orchard, and our whole discourse is of her. Say that thou overheardst us. Bid her steal into the balcony to listen to our propose. I'll make her come. I warrant you presently. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, my talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Now begin. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my new troth to lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? 
They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them, if they loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection, and to never let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full a fortunate bed as ever Beatrice shall couch upon? Oh, God of love! I know he doth deserve as much may be yielded to a man, but <laughs> nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scored right sparkling in her eyes. She cannot love, nor take, nor shape, nor project of affection. <sighs> She's so self-endeared. Sure, I think so, and therefore certainly it were not good. She knew his love, lest she make sport at it. Why you speak truth? I never yet saw a man, how wise, noble, young, how rarely featured. But she would spell him backward. So turned she every man the wrong side out. Sure, sure. Such carping is not commendable. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into air. Oh, she would laugh me out of myself, press me to death with wit. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in size, waste inwardly. It were a better death than die of mocks, which is as bad as die with tickling. Yet tell her of it, hear what she will say. No, rather, I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, as to refuse such a rare gentleman as Signor Benedict. He is the only man who is accepted, my dear Claudio. I pray you be not angry with me, madam, speaking my fancy. Senor Benedict, for shape, for bearing, argument and valor goes foremost in report. Indeed, <laughs> he hath an excellent good name. His excellence did earn it ere he had it. When are you married, madam? Why, every day, tomorrow. <laughs> Come, go in. I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel, which is the best to furnish me tomorrow. She's limed. I warrant you, we've caught her, madam. Prove to be so, then loving goes by haps. Some Cupid kills with arrows, some with traps. Oh. What fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for Pride and scorn so much. Contempt, farewell. Maiden pride to do. No glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict? Love on. <laughs> I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. Thou dost love. My kindness shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others, say thou dost deserve, and I believe it better than reportingly. Benedict be not in love with some woman. There's no believing old signs. Have any man seen him at the barber's? No, but the barber's man hath been seen with him. Indeed, he looks younger than he did. Nay, he rubs himself with civet. Can you smell him out by that? And when was he wont to wash his face? Conclude, conclude. He is in love. Hero and Margaret have by this played their parts with Beatrice. Then the two bears will not bite one, one another when they meet. My lord and brother, God save you. Good evening, brother. 
Uh, if your leisure be served, I would speak with you. In private? If it please you, yet Count Claudio may hear. For what I would speak of concerns him. And what's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know not that, but he knows what I know. There be any impediment, I pray you discover it. I came hither to tell you, and circumstances shortened, for she has been too long a talking of. The lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Even she. Your hero, the Anara's hero, every man's hero. Disloyal. The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. Could say she were worse. Think you of a worse title, and I will fit her to it. Go but with me tonight, you shall see her chamber window entered, even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. It would better fit your honor to change your mind. May this be so? I will not think it. If you will follow me, I will show you enough. And when you have seen more, proceed accordingly. If I see anything tonight why I should not marry her, tomorrow in the congregation where I should wed, there I will shame her. And as I have wooed for thee to obtain her, I will join thee to disgrace her. I will despair to turn no farther till you are my witnesses. Bear it coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. O oh, day untowardly turned. O oh, mischief strangely thwarting. O oh, plague right well prevented. So you will stay when you have seen the sequel. Are you good men and true? Yea, or else we're pity, but I should suffer salvation, body and soul. Nay, that were a punishment too good for them that should have any allegiance in them. Being chosen for the prince's watch. Well, give the charge, neighbor Dogberry. Well, for your favor, sir, why give God thanks and make no boast of it? You are thought to be the most senseless and fit men for the constable of the watch. Therefore, bear you the lantern. What? This is your charge. You are to comprehend all vagroom men. You are to bid any man stand in the prince's name. How if he will not stand? Why then? Take no note of him, but let him go and presently thank God you are rid of a knave. If he will not stand where he is bidden, he is none of the prince's subjects. True, and you are to meddle with none but the prince's subjects. You shall also make no noise in the streets, for the watch to babble and to talk is most tolerable and not to be endured. I will rather sleep than talk. I cannot see how sleeping should offend, only care that your bills be not stolen. Well, you are bid those that are drunk, get them to bed. How if they will not? Why then, let them alone till they are sober. Well, sir. Well, sir. Well, sir. If you meet a thief, you may suspect him by virtue of your office to be no true man. And for such kind men, the less you meddle and make with them, why the more for your honesty? If we know him to be a thief, shall we not lay hands on him? The most peaceable way for you, if, if you do take a thief, is to let him show himself what he is and steal from your company. You have always been called a merciful man, partner. Truly, 
I would not hang a dog by my will, much more a man who hath any honesty in him. This is the end of the charge. You, constable, are to present the prince's own person. If you meet the prince in the night, you may stay with him. Oh, nay, by your lady, that I think I cannot. Five shillings to one sentence with any man that knows the statutes, he may stay him. Marry, not without the prince be willing, for indeed the watch ought to offend no man. And it is an offense to stay a man against his will. I think it be so. And there be any matter of change, call up me. One word more. I pray you, watch about Signor Leonore's door, for the wedding be there tomorrow. There is a great coil tonight. Adieu, be vigilant, I beseech you. What, comrade? <laughs> Peace. Comrade, I say, stand thee close, then I will, like a true drunkard, utter to thee. Some treason. Therefore know, I have earned of Don John a thousand ducats. <laughs> Is it possible that any villainy should be so dear? Thou shouldst rather ask if it were possible any villainy should be so rich. I have tonight wooed Margaret, the lady hero's gentlewoman by the name of Hero, the Prince Claudio, planted and placed by my master Don John, saw afar off in the orchard this <laughs> amiable encounter. And thought the Margaret was Hero. Two of them did, the prince and Claudio. But the devil, my master, knew <laughs> she was Margaret. And partly by his oaths, which first possessed them, partly by the dark of night, which did deceive them, but most, but chiefly by my villain, which did confirm any slander that Don John had made. Away went Claudio, enraged, swore he would meet her as he was appointed the next morning. And there, before the whole congregation, shame her with what he saw or night. And send her home again without a husband. <laughs> I charge you, in the prince's name, stand. Master Constable, we have recovered the most dangerous piece of lechery that was ever known in the Commonwealth. Master, never speak. We charge you. Let us obey you to go with us. Good Ursula, wake my cousin Beatrice and desire her to rise. I will, lady. And bid her come hither. Well. Truth, I think your other were better. No, pray thee, good Meg, I'll wear this. By my truth's not so good. And I warrant your cousin will say so. Ugh, my cousin's a fool, and thou art another. I'll wear none but this. Your gown's a most rare fashion and faith. I saw the Duchess's gown that they praise so. Ugh, that exceeds, they say. But for a fine, quaint, graceful, and excellent fashion. Yours is worth ten on it. God give me joy to wear it, for my heart is exceeding heavy. It will be heavier soon by the weight of a man. Fie upon thee! Art thou not ashamed? Of what, lady? Of speaking honorably? Is there any harm in the heavier for a husband? None, I think. Ask my lady Beatrice else. Here she comes. Good morrow, cuz. Good morrow, sweet hero. Why, how now? Do you speak in the sick tune? I'm all out of other tune, methinks. I'm exceedingly ill. Hi-ho. Oh, for a hawk, a horse, or a husband. What means the full troll? Oh, nothing. I... But God send everyone their heart's desires. 
These gloves the Count sent me, they are an excellent perfume. I'm stuffed, cousin. I cannot smell. A maid and stuffed? <laughs> oh, there's Goodly catching cold. Oh, God help me. God help me. By my troth, I am sick. Oh. oh, get you some of this, um, Carduus Benedictus and lay it on your heart. It is the only thing for a qualm. <laughs> there the prickster with the thistle. Benedictus? What, why Benedictus? You have some moral in this, Benedictus? Uh, moral? No, by my truth, I have no moral meaning. Uh, we meant plain holy thistle. You may think, perchance, that I think you are in love. Nay, by our lady, I am not such a fool to think what I list, nor I list not to think what I can, nor indeed I cannot think. If I were to think my heart out of thinking that you are in love, or that you will be in love, or that you can be in love, Yet, Benedict was such another, and now he's become a man. He swore he would ever marry, and now, in spite of his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. And how you may be converted, I know not. But methinks you look with your eyes as other women do! Madam, withdraw. The prince, the counts, and your Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town are to come fetch you to church. <laughs> Help to dress me, good cuz, good Meg, good Ursula. Honest neighbor. Mary, ma'am, I have some confidence with you that discerns you nearly. Brief, I pray you, for you see, it is a busy time with me. Mary, this it is, ma'am. Yes, in truth, it is, ma'am. What is it, my good friends? Good man. Virgis, ma'am, his wits are not so blunt as, God help, I would desire they were, but, in faith, honest as the skin between his brows. Yes, I thank God. I am honest as any man living. Comparisons are adornous. Pellibrow's neighbor, Virgis. Neighbors, you are tedious. It pleases your worship to say so, but we are... The poor Duke's officers. <laughs> but truly, for mine own part, if I were as tedious as a king, I could find it in my heart to bestow it all to your worship. All thy tediousness on me, ah? Yea, and twere a thousand pound more than tis, for I hear a good exclamation on your worship as any ma'am in the city. And though I be... What a poor man. I am glad to hear it. And so am I. I would fain to know what you have to say. Oh, Mary, ma'am, our watch tonight, expecting your worship's presence, hating as errant a knave as any in Messina. A good man, sir, uh, ma'am, he will be talking. Well said, I faith, neighbor Virgis. Well, God's a good man, an honest soul, I faith, ma'am. By my troth he is, as ever broke bread, but God is to be worshipped. All men are not alike, alas, good neighbor. Indeed, neighbor, he comes too short of you. Gifts that God gives. I must leave you. <laughs> One word, ma'am. Our watch, ma'am, have indeed comprehended and... 
auspicious person. And we would have a uh, it this morning examine before your worship? Take the examination yourself and bring it me. I am now in great haste as it may appear unto you. It shall be suffragans. Fare you well. My lady, they stay for you to give your daughter to her husband. I'll wait upon them. I'm ready. Go, partner, go. Get you to Francis Seacole. Bid him bring his pen and inkhorn to the jail. We are now in examination. And we must do it wisely. We shall spare no wit, I warrant you. Only get the skilled writer to set down his excommunication and meet me at the jail. Francis, be brief, only to the plain form of marriage, and you shall recount their particular duties afterwards. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lady? No. To be married to her, friar? You come to marry her? Lady, you come hither to be married to this count? I do. If either of you know any inward impediment why you should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any count? I dare make his answer none. Oh, what men may dare do, what men may do, what men daily do not knowing what they do. Now, now, interjections? Stand thee by, friar. Father, by your leave, will you with free and unconstrained soul Give me this maid, your daughter. As freely, son, as God did give her me. Take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's but the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold how like a maid she blushes here. Comes not that blood as modest evidence to witness simple virtue? Would you not swear, all you that see her, that she were a maid by these exterior shows? But she is none. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an approved wanton. I never tempted her with word too large, but as a brother to his sister, show bashful sincerity and comely love. And I seemed ever otherwise to you? Out on thee, seeming. I will write against it. Is my lord well that he doth speak so wide? Sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonored that I've linked my dear friend to a common stale. Are these things spoken, or do I but dream? Sir, these things are spoken, and these things are true. Oh, God defend me, how I am beset. What kind of catechizing do you call this? To make you answer truly to your name. Is it not hero? Who can blot that name with any just reproach? What man was he talks with you yesternight? Out your window betwixt twelve and one. Now if you are a maid, answer to this. I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Why then, are you no maiden, Leonora? I am sorry you must hear. Upon my honor, myself, my brother, and this grieved count did see her, hear her at that hour last night, talk with the roofing at her chamber window. Who, and who hath indeed, most like a liberal villain, confessed the vile encounters they have had a thousand times in secret. O oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been if half thy outward graces had been placed about thy thoughts and counsels of thy heart. But fare thee well, most foul, most fair. How now, cousin, wherefore sink you down? Come. Let us go. These things come thus to light, smother her spirits up. How doth the lady? Dead, I think. Help, uncle! Hero, why hero? Uncle, Signor Benedict, friar! Oh, fate! Take not away thy heavy hand. Death is a fair's cover for her shame. How now, cousin hero? Have comfort, lady. Do not live, hero. Do not open thine eyes. For did I think thou wouldst not quickly die? Myself, on the rare word of reproaches, strike at thy life. 
Oh, she's fallen into a pit of ink that the wide sea hath too few drops to wash her clean again. Madam, be patient. For my part, I am so tired in wonder, I know not what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is belied. Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly not. Although, until last night, I have this twelve month been her bedfellow. Confirmed! Confirmed! Oh, that a stronger maid, which was before barred up with ribs of iron. Would the two princes lie, and Claudio lie? who loved her so that speaking of her foulness washed it with tears? Hence from her, let her die. Hear me a little. I have marked a thousand blushing apparitions to start into her face. A thousand innocent shames and angel whiteness beat away those blushes. And in her eye, there hath appeared a fire to burn the air as these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting error. Lady, what man is he you are accused of? They know that they do accuse me. I know none. Oh, my mother, prove you that any man with me conversed at hours on me, refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. There is some strange misprision in the princes. Two of them have the very bent of honor. And if their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it lives in John the Bastard, whose spirits toil in frame of villainies. I know not if they speak but truth of her. These hands shall tear her. If they wrong her honor, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Pause a while, and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the prince is left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in, and publish it that she is dead indeed. Contain a mourning ostentation, hang mournful epitaphs, and do all rites that appertain unto a burial. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this well carried shall on her behalf change slander to remorse. For it so falls out that we have we prize not to the worth whilst we enjoy it, being lacked and lost. Why then we rack the value? So will it fare with Claudio. When he shall hear she died upon his words, he shall mourn, for she had not so accused her. And if it sort not well, he may conceal her, as best befits her wounded reputation, out of all eyes, tongues, minds, and injuries. Signor Leonora, let the friar advise you. And though you know my inwardness and love is very much unto the prince and Claudio, Yet by mine honor, I will deal with this as secretly and justly as your soul should with your body. Seeing that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may leave me. Tis well consented, presently away. Come, lady, die to live. This wedding day perhaps is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin is wrong. How much might the man deserve of me that would right her? Is there any way to show such friendship? Very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is that not strange? <laughs> as strange as this thing I know not. <laughs> I'm sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice, thou lovest me. Do not swear and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? with no sauce that can be devised to it. I protest, I love thee. Why then, God forgive me. What offense, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour. I was about to protest I loved you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, 
bid me do anything for thee. <laughs> Kill Claudio. Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Farewell. Terry, sweet Beatrice. We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemy? Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain that has slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? <laughs> oh God, that I were a man. I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Sweet hero, she is wronged, she is slandered, she is undone. Beatrice. Princes and counties. Oh, that I were a man for a sake, or that I had any friend would be a man for my sake. I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore, I will die a woman with grieving. Terry, good Beatrice, by this hand, I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than by swearing, Wyatt. Think you in your soul the Count Claudio hath wronged Hero? Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I'm engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead, and so farewell. Which be the malefactors? Mary, that am I, and my partner. But which are the offenders that are to be examined? Let them come before Master Constable. Yea, Mary, let him, her, them, come before me. What are your names, friends? Baraccio. Conrad. Pray, write down Baraccio and Conrad. Do you serve God? Yea, sir, I hope. Pray, write down they hope to serve God. <clears throat> Master, mistress, it is proved already that you are little better than a false knave, and it will go near to be thought so shortly. How you answer for yourself, I say to you, it is thought you are as false as a knave. Sir, I say to you, I am none. Well, stand aside. Have you written down that they are none? Master, constable, you go not the way to examine. You must call forth the watch that is the accuser. Yea, Mary, that is the eftest way. Master, I charge you in the prince's name, accuse this man. This man said, sir, that Don John, the prince's brother, was a villain. Write down Prince John a villain. Why, this is flat perjury to call a prince's brother villain. Master Constable. Pray thee, fellow, peace. Do not like thy look, I promise thee. What heard you her say else? Mary, that she had received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. Flat burglary as ever was committed. Huh. What else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean, upon his word, to disgrace Hero before the whole assembly and not marry her. Oh, villain, thou wilt be condemned into everlasting redemption for this. What else? And this is more, masters, than you can deny. Prince John is this morning secretly stolen away. Here was, in this very manner, accused, in this very same manner, refused, and upon the grief of this, 
suddenly died. Let this man be bound and brought to Leonora's. I will go before and bring her this, uh, this report. Come, let them be opinioned. Let them be in the hands of coxcomb. God's my life. Where's the Saxon? Let him write down the prince's officer, coxcomb. Come, bind him, thou naughty varlet. Away! You are an ass. You are an ass! Dost thou not suspect my place? Oh, that he were here to write me down an ass. But, masters, remember that I am an ass, though it not be written down. Yet forget not that I am an ass! <laughs> no, thou villain, thou art full of piety, as shall be proved upon thee by good witness. I am a wise fellow, and which is more, an officer, and which is more, a householder, and which is more, as pretty piece of flesh as any in Messina, and one that knows the law. Go to! Bring him, her, away! Oh, that I had be writ down an ass! <laughs> If you go on thus, you will kill yourself. I pray thee, give not me counsel, nor let no comforter of a light mine ear, but such a one whose wrongs do suit with mine. Bring me a mother that so loved her child, whose joy of hers overwhelmed like mine, and I of her will gather patience. But there is no such woman. Therefore, give me no counsel. My griefs cry louder than advertisement. Yet, bend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. There. Thou speakest reason. Nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me heroes belied. That shall Claudio know. So shall the prince and all of them that does dishonor her. Have some haste, Leonora. Some haste, my lord? Are you so hasty now? Well, all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good woman. If she could right herself with quarreling, some of us would lie low. Who wrongs her? Mary, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler, thou. No Claudio to thy head. Thou hast so wronged mine innocent child and me that I am forced to lay my reverence by. I say, thou hast belied mine innocent child. Thy slander hath gone through and through her heart, and she lies buried with her ancestors. Oh, in a tomb where never scandal slept, save this of hers, framed by thy villainy. My villainy? Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You say not right, old woman. My lord. My lord, I'll prove it on his body if he dare. Away, I will not have to do with you. Canst thou so daft me? Thou hast killed my child. If thou killst me, boy, thou shalt kill a woman. My heart is sorry for your daughter's death. But on my honor, she was charged with nothing but what was true and very full of proof. My lord, my lord. I will not no. hear you. Come, sister, away. I will be heard. And shall, or some of us will smart for it. See, see, here comes the man we went to seek. Now, senor, what news? Good day, my lord. Welcome, senor. As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick or angry? Shall I speak a word in your ear? God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. I just not. I will make it good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. Do me right, or I will protest your cowardice. 
You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. Well, I will meet you, so I may have good cheer. <laughs> but when shall we set the savage bull's horn on the sensible Benedict's head? Yea, and text underneath. Here dwells Benedict, the married man. <laughs> Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. I will leave you now to your gossip-like humor. You break jests as braggarts do their blades, which, God be thanked, hurt not. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your brother the bastard is fled from Messina. You have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord Lackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with him. He is in earnest. In, in most profound earnest, and I'll warrant you for love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee. Most sincerely. But did he not say my brother was fled? You, sir, if justice cannot tame you, she shall ne'er weigh more reasons in her balance. Officers, what offense has Baraccio done? <laughs> Mary, sir, committed false report, moreover, spoken untruths, secondarily has slandered, sixth and lastly has belied a lady, thirdly has verified unjust things, and, to conclude, he is a lying knave. Who have you offended that you were thus bound to your answer? This learned constable's too cunning to be understood. What's your offense? Sweet prince, I have deceived even your very eyes. What your wisdoms could not discover, <laughs> these shallow fools have brought to light who in the night overheard me confessing how Don John, your brother, incensed me to slander the lady hero. How you were brought into the orchard and saw me court Margaret in the in hero's garments. How you disgraced her when you should marry her. <laughs> my villainy, <laughs> they have upon record. The lady is dead upon mine and my master's false accusation. And briefly, I desire nothing but the reward of a villain. Runs not this speech like iron through your blood? I have, I have drunk poison while he uttered it. But did my brother set thee on to this? Yea, and <laughs> paid me richly for it. He's composed and framed a treachery and fled he is upon this villainy. Sweet hero, now thy image doth appear in the rare semblance that I loved at first. Come. By this time our sexton hath reformed Signor Leonora of the matter. And, masters, do not forget to specify what time and place shall serve that I am an ass. Which is the villain? Let me see his eyes that when I know another man like him, I may avoid him. Which of these is he? You would know your wronger. <laughs> Look on me. Art thou the slave that with thy breath has killed mine innocent child? Yes, even I alone. No, not so, villain. Thou beliest thyself. Here stand a pair of honorable men. A third is fled that had a hand in it. I thank you, princes, for my daughter's death. Record it with your high and worthy deeds. Twas bravely done if you bethink you of it. I know not how to pray your patience. Impose me to what your penance, your invention can lay upon my sin. Yet sinned I not but in mistaking. By my soul nor I, and yet to satisfy this good woman, I would been under any heavy weight that he'll enjoin me to. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. That were impossible. But I pray you both, possess the people in Messina here, how innocent she died. Hang her an epitaph upon her tomb and sing it to her bones. Sing it tonight. Tomorrow morning, come you to my house. And since you cannot be my son-in-law, be yet my nephew, my sister half a daughter, almost a copy of my child that's dead, and she alone is heir to both of us. 
give her the right you should have given her cousin. And so dies my revenge. Oh, noble sir, your overkindness doth wring tears from me. I do embrace your offer and dispose for henceforth of poor Claudio. Tomorrow, then I will expect your coming. Tonight, I take my leave. This naughty man shall face to face be brought to Margaret, who I believe was packed in all this wrong, hired to it by your brother. No, by my soul, she was not, nor knew not what she did when she spoke to me, but always hath been just and virtuous in anything that I, know, that I do know by her. Moreover, ma'am, which is indeed not under white and black, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me an ass. I beseech you, let it be remembered in his punishment. I thank thee for thy care and honest pains. Your worship speaks like a most thankful and reverent youth, and I praise God for you. There's for thy pains. God save the foundation. Go, I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. I leave an errant knave with your worship, which I beseech your worship to correct yourself for the example of others. God keep your worship. Come, neighbor. Until tomorrow morning, lords, farewell. We will not fail. Tonight I'll mourn with Hero. Pray thee, sweet mistress Margaret, deserve well at my hands by helping me to the speech of Beatrice. Will you then write me a sonnet in praise of my beauty? In the so highest style, Margaret, that no man living shall come over it, for in most comely truth thou deservest it. To have no man come over me. Thy wit is as quick as the greyhound's mouth. It catches. <laughs> and yours is as blunt as the fencer's foil, which hit but hurt not. I will call Beatrice to you, who I think hath legs. And therefore will come. Sweet Beatrice, wouldst thou come when I called thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, stay but till then. Then is spoken. Very well now, and yet, ere I go, let me go with that I came, which is with knowing what hath passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon I will kiss thee. Foul words is only foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noisome. Therefore, I'll depart on kiss. I must tell thee plainly. Claudio undergoes my challenge, and either I must shortly hear from him, or I will subscribe him a coward. And I pray thee now, tell me, for which of my bad parts didst thou first fall in love with me? For all them together. 
But for which of my good parts did you first suffer love from me? Suffer love. A good epithet. I do suffer love indeed, for I love thee against my will. In spite of your heart, I think. Alas, poor heart, if you spite it for my sake, I will spite it for yours, for I will never love that which my friend hates. Thou and I are too wise to woo peaceably. It appears not in this confession. There is not one wise man among twenty that will praise himself. How doth your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? Very ill, too. Serve God, love me, and men. There I will leave you, too, for here comes one in haste. Madam, you must come to your uncle. It is proved my lady hero hath been falsely accused, the prince and Claudio mightily abused, and Don John is the author of all who is fled and gone. Will you come presently? Will you go hear this news, senor? I will live in thy heart, die in thy lap, and be buried in thy eyes. And moreover, I will go with thee to thy uncles. Is this the monument of Leonora? It is, my lord. Done to death by slanderous tongues was the hero that here lies. Death in garden of her wrongs gives her fame which never dies. So thy life that died with shame lives in death with glorious fame. Now hang thou there upon the tomb praising her when I am dumb. Now music. Sound and sing your solemn hymn. Heart and goddess of the night, those that slow thy virgin might, for the witch with songs of woe round. To thy bones, good night. Yearly I will do this right. Good morrow, masters. Put your torches out. Come, let us hence, and to Leonora's we will go. <sighs> Did I not tell you she was innocent? So are the prince and Claudio who accused her. Well, I am glad all things sort so well. <laughs> and so am I, being else by faith and forced to call young Claudio to a reckoning for it. Well, daughter, and you gentlewomen all, withdraw into a chamber by yourselves, and when I send for you, come hither. Mast! The prince and Claudio promised by this hour to visit me. Prior, I must entreat your pains, I think. To do what, senor? To bind me, or undo me, one of them. Senora Leonora, truth it is, good senora, your niece regards me with an eye of favor. That eye, my daughter, lent her. Tis most true. And I do with an eye of love requite her. The sight whereof I think you had from me, from Claudio, and the prince. But what's your will? In the state of honorable marriage, in which, good friar, I shall desire your help. My heart is with your liking. And my help. Here comes the prince and Claudio. Good morrow to this fair assembly. Good morrow, prince. Good morrow, Claudio. 
We here attend you. Are you yet determined today to marry my sister's daughter? Call her for sister. Here's the friar ready. Good morrow, Claudio. Why? What's the matter that you have such a February face? Which is the lady I must seize upon? The same is she. Well, then she's mine. Sweet, let me see your face. No, that you shall not till you take her hand before this friar and swear to marry her. Give me your hand before this holy friar. I am your husband, if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. And when you loved, you are my other husband. Another hero? Nothing certainer. One hero died defiled, but I do live. And as surely as I live, I am a maid. The former hero? Hero that is dead? She died, my lord, but whilst her slander lived... All this amazement can I qualify when, after that, the holy rites are ended? I'll tell you largely of fair hero's death. Meantime, let wonders seem familiar, and to the chapel let us presently. Soft and fair, friar. Which is Beatrice? I answer to that name. What is your will? Do not you love me? Why? No. No more than reason. Why, then? Your uncle and the prince and Claudio have been deceived. They swore you did. Do not you love me? Troth, no. No more than reason. Why then, my cousin Margaret and Ursula are much deceived, for they did swear you did. They swore that you were almost sick for me. <laughs> they swore that you were well nigh dead for me. Tis no such matter. Then you do not love me? No, truly, but in a friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I am sure you love the gentleman. And I'll be sworn upon it that he loves her. For here's a paper written in his hand, a halting sonnet of his own pure brain, fashioned to Beatrice. And here's another, writ in my cousin's own hand, stolen from her pocket, containing her affection unto Benedict. A miracle! Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee, but by this light I take thee for pity. I would not deny you, but by this good day I yield upon great persuasion, and partly to save your life, for I was told you were in a consumption. Peace, I will stop your mouth. How dost thou, Benedict, the married man? I'll tell thee what, Prince. A college of witcrackers cannot flout me out of my humor. I had well hoped thou wouldst have denied Beatrice, that I might have cudgeled thee out of thy single life. Come, come, we are friends. Let's have a dance ere we are married, that we may lighten our own hearts and our wives' heels. We'll have dancing afterward. First of my word. Therefore, play music. My lord, your brother John is taken in flight and brought with armed men back to Messina. Think not on him till tomorrow. I'll devise the brave punishments for him. Strike up, pipers!